I've already pre-populated another loop with each of the device types. Let's take a look. First, let's look at the ALGV photo sensor. If I double click, it brings up the configure input settings. Inside the configure input settings is the sensor settings. We can select fire or supervisory. Notice when we select supervisory, the latching option becomes available. When we select fire, it's grayed out. At the bottom, we can select our location text and our zone from 1 to 500. Next is the Sensor Properties tab. Here we can select our day sensitivity and night sensitivity, and also indicate whether or not we want to use pre-alarm. Next, let's take a look at the ionization sensor. Notice that the sensor settings are the same. We can have fire or supervisory. Again, the latching option becomes available when we select supervisory. We have our location text at the bottom and our zone information. On the sensor properties, we can select the day sensitivity between low, normal, and high, and our night sensitivity between low, normal, and high, and also indicate pre-alarm. Next is the ATG-EA heat detector. Again, the sensor settings are fire or supervisory. The location text is the same. The zone information is the same. On the sensor properties tab, we have our day and night temperature threshold. Let's look at the duct detector. Again, under the input properties, we see the sensor settings for fire and supervisory, and our sensor properties for our day and night sensitivity and whether or not we want to indicate pre-alarm. Notice the duct detector has a sub-address for programming its relay output. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on. 